Hello, I'm Dr. Mustafa Kabbani, and I would like to invite you all to attend the Syrian Excellence in Endodontics online conference this December, which is a great opportunity for all the dentists who are struggling with their daily endo, so don't miss it. Hello, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Thank you for being with us today. I'm Dr. Mustafa Kabbani, and I would like to thank Professor Ahmed Rati and the Excellence in Endodontic group for giving me the chance to reach you all and talk about a very important topic, which is ledges. So my lecture today is dedicated for dentists who are struggling or having a very hard time treating calcified and ledge canals or what we call blocked canals. So these cases are usually retreatment cases or cases that we started them ourselves without paying a lot of attention to the preoperative x-ray, to the anatomy of the canal, or even to the curvature of the canal, leading to iatrogenic blockage of the canal. So in the beginning in this lecture, I will start talking about the different iatrogenic errors that we may face or we may have in the during the root canal preparation. So please bear with me to learn more about the ledges battle and how we can win the battle together. If you have any clarification or questions, please type them down in the box of comment and I shall get back to you right after the webinar and answer you all. So what is iatrogenic canal blockage? Iatrogenic canal blockage are series of unintentional accidents that are induced in a patient by a clinician or a dentist characterized by the inability to instrument the canal to the full working length which affects the quality of the cleaning of the root canal treatment and the success of the root canal treatment. The iatrogenic errors are classified into apical transportation, apical perforation, gouging, ledges that I'm going to talk a lot about today, separated endodontic instrument and overlooked canals or anatomy. So what is a ledge? A ledge is defined as an iatrogenic created irregularity in the root canal that prevent the access to the apical periodontium. In other words, a ledge is created when the working length can no longer be negotiated and the original pathway of the canal has been lost. Our problem is not the ledge itself. The problem is the area to be well cleaned and disinfected below the ledge. So whenever we fail to bypass a ledge, we will have an incomplete instrumentation to the canal, incomplete irrigation, and incomplete root filling. A misdiagnosed ledge is also very risky as it may lead to a false canal formation, which may eventually lead to a perforation due to forcing of the instrument in unrecognized ledges. All right, let me ask you here, in which cases do you believe creating a ledge is easier? In a straight root canal case or a curved canal case? Well, ledges are more common in curved canal cases and calcified canal cases, so you have to be extra careful during the preparation of such canals. Also, ledges are encountered after the removal of a broken file. This is an intentional ledge which is created during the preparation of the staging platform around the broken file. In addition to the previous points, whenever you have a retreatment case with short root canal filling, you should expect a ledge in that case. So I personally schedule longer appointments for, for such cases so I can have enough time to deal with that expected ledge. All right, let me now share with you the causes of ledges as prevention is better than cure. All right, now the causes of ledges are so many, but the most important one is having inadequate or obstructed access to the full working length of the canal especially if you are using the old generation rotary files that were inflexible and usually tend to deflect out the original path of the canal. Also, the incorrect assessment of the canal direction may lead to ledge formation. 
So we can see in this photo how the file is deflecting out the original path of the canal when we have inadequate access cavity. In addition, the incorrect assessment of root canal direction may lead to ledge formation. Now, beside the previous points, working length determination is a very important step to avoid ledge formation as instrumenting the canal to shorter working length will lead to ledge formation. We were glad in this conference to have my friend, Dr. Wael Ashtar, who talked about working length determination. So I would like to refer you all to his lecture to know more about the importance of working length determination. Now, canal curvature can be another reason of uh, ledge formation. And here I have to mention that 2D X-rays can only show mesial or distal curvature of the canals whereas the canals can be curved in buccal or lingual direction. So pre-bending of the file before introducing it to the canal is very important to reduce the chance of creating a ledge. So glide path is very important to prevent ledge formation. Also skipping files and skipping sizes is another reason for ledge formation. One study showed that um, improper access in addition to incorrect working length determination and skipping files are the most common reason for ledge formation. So here we can see how we may end up with a false canal formation or even a perforation if we kept pushing a stiff big taper file inside a canal without taking in consideration the curvature of that canal. Now using stiff files, especially the old generation and flexible big taper files and curve root canal may lead to ledge formation and even perforation that because of the metallic memory of these files. Now we have something called intentional ledges which is usually created during the preparation of staging platform during the retrieval of broken instrument or by passing of the broken instrument. So you have to deal with that ledge after completing the procedure of the retrieval. Also the excessive use of the chelating agent may lead to ledge formation as it softens the dentin. Now, neglecting patency, ineffective irrigation, and pushing the debris uh, to the apical area will lead to ledge formation as well. Now, do we have different types of ledges? Yes, we do. We have two types of ledges. We have type A and type B. The type A of ledges is very easy to be managed and usually is formed within the original path of the canal. Now, type B ledges is usually formed in very curved canals and it's very difficult to be managed. And usually it's accompanied with a false canal that is created due to a misdirection or misdirecting the file toward the original path of the canal. In this X-ray, this is a patient who was referred to me earlier this month. And as you can see, the file is going completely away from the original path of the canal. And luckily that the referring dentist who was doing a retreatment for this tooth stopped at that point and she didn't push her file further. Otherwise she would end with a perforation. So in this slide, we can see in the preoperative x-ray, this preoperative x-ray I got from the referring dentist, we can see how the file is going completely out the original path of the canal. If she pushed her file further, she would end with a perforation. And here you can see my management of the case and how I regained the correct path of the canal. So as I mentioned earlier, having an unrecognized ledge is very risky as you we, we may end up with a false canal formation or even a perforation so how can we recognize ledges well there are two methods to recognize ledges either clinically or radiographically 
Now, ledges are recognized clinically whenever you have a sudden loss of working length. For example, if you are preparing a, can a certain canal to 20 mm and after instrumenting the canal with few files, you can push your file now more than 17 mm. At that time, you have to know that you already created the ledge. Another clinical situation, whenever you lose the tactile sensation of your file, you feel your file is hitting a solid wall. Tactile sensation is very important during the entire root canal treatment and even during bypassing ledges or broken instruments. So whenever you feel that that tactile sensation or binding sensation is lost, then you should know that you are dealing with a ledge. In addition, straightened curve canals or short obturated teeth may indicate the presence of a ledge. So here in this case, we can see in the preoperative x-ray how the gutta percha is deviated from the original path of the canal. Here I had to deal with three ledges, one of them in the mesiobuccal, the other in the mesiolingual, and the last one was the distal uh, canal. Here in the distal canal, we had a ledge at the apical part, and you can see how I managed the case and how I obturated the tooth. And this is my final obturation. All right, now let's talk about the frequency of ledges. How often do we encounter ledges in our daily practice? Well, many papers studied the frequency of ledges and some of them related the frequency of ledge formation to different factors, including the practitioner and the experience of that practitioner, student, supervised student, general dentist, or even an endodontist, uh, while other studies studied the effect of canal curvature or canal location on uh, ledge formation. Let me now discuss with you the first factor, which is the experience of the practitioner. So Dr. Balto in his study found that fourth year student encountered more ledges when they we compare them to fifth year student. So experience does matter here. Another study showed that general dentists or students encounter more ledges than endodontists especially in primary endodontic treatment. Canal curvature is the second factor affecting ledge formation, and actually it's the most significant variable affecting incidence of ledging. Whenever you have a canal with curvature over 20 degree, there is a huge chance to end with ledge formation, so you have to be extra careful when treating such canals. Studies show that mesiobuccal and mesiolingual canals show more ledges when they are compared to palatal or distal canals. All right, now this is a retreatment case. The case was started by a friend of mine who was trying to do a, re a retreatment for this tooth. Okay, she started the retreatment, yet she was not able to go and negotiate the mesiobuccal canal to the full working length. So she referred the patient to me, and here we can see my management for the case. But here, let me ask you, what was the reason of ledge formation? We can see here how the file is deflected completely out the original path of the canal, and it was about to perforate the root, actually. So what was the reason of this? As what we mentioned in the previous slide, we can notice that we have a curved root, this is number one, and also canal location. We mentioned earlier that there is a high frequency of ledge formation in mesiobuccal canals, and this is a mesiobuccal canal. And there is a high risk of creating a ledge in curved roots, and this is a curved root. And finally, now we reach the exciting part, the management of ledges. 
So now the first step of management of ledges is having a very good quality radiograph. So whenever a ledge is uh, suspected, a file should be inserted in the canal to the point of the suspected ledge and an X-ray is taken. The central X-ray beam should be directed in perpendicular way to the involved area. If the X-ray showed the tip of the file directed away from the canal human, then the ledge is confirmed. The second step of management is having copious irrigation in the ledge canal using different irrigants like EDTA and sodium hypochlorite. The EDTA irrigation here will dissolve the smear layer under the formed ledge while the sodium hypochlorite irrigation will dissolve the collagen and the debris. Now, before starting the initial negotiation of the ledge, we have to make sure that the canal is completely free of any debris or any old root filling. So whenever we have gutta percha in retreatment cases, we have to remove all that gutta percha before starting the negotiation and take an x-ray to confirm the emptiness of the canal. Now, the initial negotiation of the file should be done using a small manual file with a distinct curvature on its tip. This curvature can be done using an endobender or a tweezer, and the curvature should look similar somehow to the curvature shown in the X-ray. The mark on the rubber stopper should coincide the direction of the curvature on the file. All what you have to do now is to place the pre file inside the canal. You have to keep pulling in and out that file and rotate it until you feel the sticky point, which means that the pre file found the original path of the canal. Now take, the, now take an X-ray to make sure that you regain the correct path of the canal and then start moving your stainless steel file short up and down strokes until the file is completely loose. Always try to stay below the ledge and never go above the ledge. Otherwise, you have to spend more time to bypass that ledge again. Keep going down until you reach the estimated working length and then check the patency by using Apex Locator or taking an X-ray. You may now continue the preparation of the ledge canal by using either uh, manual hand files or rotary files. If you choose to use rotary files, then you have to go for CM wire rotary files, control memory rotary files, that you have to place the file with your hand first below the ledge and then attach it to the rotary motor and activate with short up and down movement to enlarge the space below the ledge and eliminate the ledge for easier obturation. Now for obturation, you may need to pre-curve the gutta percha cone and obturate the tooth in two steps. First, the apical part, down pack that part and then backfill the ledge area. Or you can go for bioceramic sealer. All right, now I'm going to play a short video for you in which I bypassed the ledge using a small pre-curve file and then I enlarged the area behind the ledge using rotary file. So in the beginning you have to start with manual files to find the catch and bypass the ledge, always irrigate. Now I'm using the rotary file, I'm looking for a drop. Here I went behind the ledge, now I'm activating and enlarging the space behind the ledge. Irrigate, always irrigate. All right, now I'm going to share with you some clinical recommendations. So once you bypass the ledge with your hand file, please keep the tip of that file below the ledge. Never take it above the ledge. Otherwise, you have to spend more time to bypass the ledge again. Well, another tip or another clinical tip is to use 
a lot of lubricants and to irrigate a lot during bypassing the ledges. Otherwise, you will end up with a new blockage of the canal due to the accumulation of dentinal chips. Now, whenever the files start moving freely inside the canal and it's completely loose, now you may start using longer push and pull strokes to reduce the size of the ledge. All right, now, if the exploring file or endodontic instrument can go further to the estimated working length, then an apex locator can be used to determine if we reach the apical foramen or not. And also here we have to take an x-ray to confirm reaching to the full working length and achieving patency. Another good idea to use uh, greater taper hand files after bypassing the ledge. This type of files have a huge taper, uh, taper 3 or taper 4 or taper 5, uh, which can reduce the size of the ledge easily and quicker before the introduction of our rotary file inside the canal below the ledge. All right, so let me ask you here, do you believe we can bypass every single ledge? Well, nothing is absolute in this world. So no, we cannot bypass every single ledge. So no matter how skillful you are and what equipments you have, you're going to encounter some type of ledges that you can't bypass. In the beginning, we have to confess that ledges complicate the endodontic treatment and worsen the long-term prognosis of the case. So let's say if you are treating a case with a ledge and you couldn't reach the full working length, what should you do? In the beginning, you have to consider referring the case to a specialist or to someone who has the skills and the equipment that enable him to bypass such a ledge. All right, now let's assume that that specialist couldn't even bypass the ledge. The ledge is very difficult and he couldn't bypass it. What should we do now? Well, we might consider using intracanal medicaments for some time, and then we will keep the tooth under observation for a period of six to 12 months. If there was any reduction in the size of the periapical radiolucency or resolution of the symptoms, then we will keep that tooth under observation for longer periods. Otherwise, we might consider preapical surgery, especially if the ledge was at the apical portion of the root. So let me now, before showing you my clinical cases, talk a little bit about prevention. Before starting any root canal treatment, we should always take preoperative radiograph. This radiograph should be used to evaluate the canal curvature and to estimate the working length. Coronal flaring and having straight line axis are very important factors that help us to avoid creating ledges. Copious irrigation using different types of irrigants and especially sodium hypochlorite will always help us to clean the debris and keep the canal patent. We can also keep the canal patent by having frequent recapitulation. Using control memory files with non-cutting tips is also advisable. This type of files can follow the curvature of the canals and never deviate from the original path of the canal. So let's move on and let me show you some clinical cases. Uh, this case was for a patient whose name is Tariq. Tariq had a lot of pain and swelling. He was taking medication for the last few days. The pain was going stronger. He couldn't take the pain. He contacted me. I believe it was about 10 p.m. 
and he was like please open the clinic for me and try to help me so i told him okay let's go to the clinic i opened the clinic and then i start my checkup this tooth was very tender on percussion i took an x-ray and i saw this so just before starting the case i knew that i'm going to encounter a ledge that i had to bypass i knew this because we already have a short obturation short root filling from the previous uh, endodontic treatment and we can see the gutta percha is deviating from the uh, original path of the canal okay in this case in the mesial root we have already a radiolucency around the apex so we had to open the canal to relieve the pain of the patient in the x-ray number two we can see the level of the ledge this ledge was bypassed in two steps so in x-ray number three i bypassed the first part of the ledge while in the x-ray number four i bypassed the second part of the ledge and I was able to achieve patency here I had to connect my apex locator to confirm patency and then I took this x-ray and in the x-ray number five I'm trying my uh, master cones after the preparation of the canals here I prepare the canals using rotary files and the photo number six is showing my hero file, the, uh, the file that helped me a lot to open the canals. And we can see my obturation after completing the treatment. All right, now let's go to the second case. The second case is related to a lady who was about 45 years old. She came to the clinic with mild swelling in the, in the buccal mucosa and extreme pain. She was not able to bite on this tooth. I did the percussion test and it was very tender. So I took an x-ray and I was able to address four problems after taking the preoperative x-ray first of all very poor crown and we can see also a poor endodontic treatment with possible perforation here and a lesion around the mesi root so i told the patient let me try to save this tooth and if i failed we can extract it she was, yeah, okay, let's take the risk. So here we can see the confirmation of the perforation. And after that, I was surprised with three ledges in three different canals that I was able to manage and bypass after a few visits. So here we have to know that bypassing ledges may take time and it needs patience from you. Here we can see the perforation clinically and we can see also the MTA after completing the treatment by which I closed the perforation and here we can see my final obturation. So the patient came later for fiber post placement in the distal canal, core build up and a crown and the tooth is saved she's still eating on it until today this is this was almost two years ago now the third case is related to my friend's sister she started root canal treatment at the university with a student he completed the root canal treatment and later on she had a lot of pain and swelling she went back to the university they started retreatment they removed all the gutta percha they put cotton and tf but the pain didn't go away so he contacted me and he asked me to see her and i was not able to reach the estimated working length in the distal canal so there was a ledge that I was able to bypass at the end of that visit. And also I was able to locate the MB2 canal. And here is my final obturation.
All right, now case number four was very exciting case. The patient was referred to me for retreatment. In the preoperative x-ray, I noticed that there is two broken instrument here. So in the beginning, I removed all the old root filling. And here we can see the broken instruments. I was able to remove the first one. And then I removed the second one. And here in this x-ray, we can see the tooth without any broken instruments, but we created what we call intentional ledge as we were um, preparing staging platform around the broken instruments. Here we can see the ledge level. I was not able to go to the full estimated working length. And after few trials, I was able to bypass it and here is my final obturation. So let's go now to case number five. In case number five, we can see that the uh, dentist who performed this root uh, canal treatment was not able to reach the full working length because of ledges that I was able to bypass and this is my final obturation. The last clinical case today is case number six, which is not mine. This case is for my dear friend and brother, Dr. Zahir Swedan, a very talented endodontist in Syria. We can see how he managed this very tough case, retreatment case, again, short root filling, ledge that he bypassed and we can see his final obturation, very beautiful obturation. And we can see the lateral canal here filled. And this is his comment about ledges in general, especially in retreatment cases. All right, now at the end of this webinar, I would like to thank you all for joining us. And I would like to thank Professor Ahmed Madarati and the Excellence in Endodontics group for giving me the chance to reach you all. Hope you enjoyed this webinar and please don't hesitate to contact me in case you have any questions or clarifications. You can either direct message me on Instagram, Facebook, or type your questions in the comment box and I will get back to you. Happy New Year. Stay safe. Bye-bye.